All right. So finally, a very interesting uh, um, topic, you know, since Plato, since the Pythagoreans, and uh, for me especially, uh, is uh, Leo. Uh, Leo, if I'm not pronouncing your family name correctly, please correct me when it's your turn to talk. Hemetsberger from Austria. That Perfect. Thank you. Uses music in philosophical practice. I must thank Donata for telling me that if I'm looking for that, Leo is the man. He also shared with you a YouTube uh, address in which you can have more information about his work. And Leo, the ground is yours. Thank you very much. So thank you for your short introduction. Um, I'm a philosopher working in the field of applied philosophy since uh, 2007. I am, among many others, one of the founders of the first postgraduate university course for philosophical practice in German-speaking Europe at the Vienna University. And I put uh, some uh, links on the uh, chat so you can follow them and uh, look at the website after my speech. Maybe or I will send them to uh, Lydia or the two Alexandra so they can pass them on. So at this course, I'm a lecturer and diploma examiner and there as well. I am also the chairman of the Association of Applied Philosophy in Austria with more than 30 members. And since 2013, I'm organizing the event Nights of Philosophy this year on the 17th to the 19th November in Vienna and all other Austrian towns with more than 20 performing philosophers and almost 50% of these philosophers are female philosophers, which makes me very proud. So I'm not working on uh, only at the universities, so, but I'm also doing my um, philosophic, philosophical uh, workshops. And uh, many participants of my applied workshops have no philosophical background. So it is hard to follow a philosophical lecture without breaks. So they need time to think about what has been said. And uh, to solve this problem, I'm combining my lectures with music. My instrument is called the um, hang drum. And it's an instrument which makes, you will hear it, which makes very smooth sounds. So uh, you get in some kind of um, meditation uh, mindset. And um, there are also various musicians who are joining me on my shows. The during of these shows, of these lectures are approximately one and a half hours. And I have a camera operator and audio technician, so they are recording all the lectures. All of them are in German, I'm very sorry. And, um, but um, they are visible on the website. You find them on YouTube, as uh, Lydia al already mentioned, uh, on Instagram. I'm, I'm a little bit um, keen to social media. And um, there is also uh, a podcast on Spotify where you can find these um, pieces of the lectures. So now I would like to give you um, a short example of my performances and every time the performance starts of course with music Leo, it is. Thank you for having me. We can't see you. We can't see you. We can't, we can't see, see you, but you see, you see the instrument. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is what it looks like. It's made of metal, and it's some kind of a percussion instrument. It comes from 
Switzerland exactly comes from Bern. Uh, and <laughs> yes, I'm, 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 I'm playing them now for a couple of years. So I'm starting my, um, my lectures with music and um, I just given you now a short example of how uh, this lecture would go on. So thank you for having me and even giving me the opportunity to share some thoughts with you tonight. And the, the title of the short performance is what is knowledge? And it will consist of some philosophical quotes and thoughts and music performed on this instrument called Hang. So first, what is knowledge? Philosophy has been asking this question for 2,500 years and we are still not sure yet. Let me try to explain this by quoting former US Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld who recently passed away when asked about the Iraq crisis, let me quote, there are known knowns, there are known unknowns, and there are unknown unknowns. So there are things we know, and we know that we know. There are things we know that we don't know, and this is the standard scientific approach to unveil the unknown. But there are also the unknown, unknown. So there are things we cannot know, that we don't know them, things that are out of context, black swan events, may be called. But the fourth possibility is the one he missed. And these are the unknown knowns, that there are things we know or should know, but we don't want to know them. And that is, for example, the starting point of psychoanalysis. Second, the sophist Gorgias, who is well known from Plato's dialogues and lived around 400 BC, he said, let me quote again, nothing exists. And even if something exists, nothing can be known about it. And even if something can be known about it, knowledge about it cannot be communicated to others. End of quote. And knowledge economy uses knowledge, on the other hand, to generate tangible and intangible values. So says Wikipedia. So is knowledge nowadays just a business product or a productive asset? The key problem is the vague definition of, of knowledge because data or information is usually not equivalent to knowledge. So what is your definition, Socrates would ask. Peter Drucker, management guru and one of the founders of the term knowledge economy, who got many of his ideas from Kondriatiev, Frederick Taylor and Schumpeter, said, knowledge is between two ears and only between two ears. You cannot manage knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. 
So what is data, information, knowledge, wisdom? Worldwide, we are collecting a huge amount of data. And what is the difference between data and information? Gregory Bateson, one of the founders of cybernetics in biology said, information is a difference that makes a difference. To put this information into the appropriate context, so that is, it generates knowledge, we need judgment. So we never can be quite clear whether we are referring to the world as it is or the world as we see it. So does wisdom evolve out of knowledge? What is wisdom? Wisdom is my favorite definition. Wisdom is prevention. Avoid the problem so you don't have to solve it. <laughs> Finally, let me refer to Epictet, a Stoic Roman philosopher who lived about 150 AD. The following quote seems quite contemporary, considering the number of people in our world who deal with existential fears and anxiety problems. Quote, Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxiety, anxieties about real problems. End of quote. So, this is my little, uh, this was my little introduction and in how I am um, giving my philosophical practice speeches and lectures and I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for this for having me. Thank you very much Leo for this uh, wonderful talk and for actually exemplifying your skills as a musician with this amazing instrument. I open the floor for discussion. Well this is a lovely workshop the, the very idea of the session is wonderful, I think very promising, and all of the approaches are really interesting, but I, I must uh, say, Leo, that is fascinating. I very much appreciate and, uh, just uh, the opportunity to experience, as, as opposed to you explaining that you do this, it really gives a, a greater clarity about the kind of approach you are using there. And I do have a specific question for you, which is, uh, what would you say that you were bringing in with the music that wouldn't be there if the music wasn't there? What exactly do you think is the difference that it makes when you use the, the music as you just did? What, what I'm giving the audience is time to think about what just was said. So uh, the music is giving them uh, a different um, state of mind because uh, you are not related to words. You 
receive the impression of the argument and then you have time to be open to to some kind of resonance of your of, of, of your own uh, thinking about the problems which are uh, the, the theme of, of, of the evening and when I'm finished uh, with my with my um, lecture including the music then um, often the discussion starts uh, between uh, the participants and uh, there's a lot of talks and a lot of um, fun beer drinking having a glass of wine and it's a, it's it's sometimes it's a little um, symposium like you know also my experience is uh, the music should not to uh, I'm, I'm, I love rock music I love jazz I love very complicated jazz music but that's not the kind of music uh, which is helpful in this uh, context so mm -hmm.